So this is phylum Platyhelminthes. This is the phylum of many firsts. Like it is going to have some major characteristics which have uh, been arisen from this uh, phylum itself. So these characteristics are first one is the bilateral symmetry. Okay, bilateral symmetry because what is bilateral symmetry? It is when you can divide an organism into two equal parts just by uh, cutting it from one line passing through the central center of the axis. Okay, if you are having this organism like this, this structure, so if you cut it from this axis only, then it is going to have bilateral symmetry. Okay, and it is also the first triploblast, which means that an extra germ layer that it is going to have is of mesoderm. And uh, the phylum prior to this phylum, they were having ectoderm and endoderm. Only they were diploblast, and an extra mm, germ layer that I, and that has, or uh, actually developed in this phylum is mesoderm. And also, it is the first phylum which had cephalization. That means you can actually distinguish like which part is the head part in these organism. Okay, and then they are having uh, excretory. Um, cells, those are called flame cells or protonephridia for their ex excretion and then they are having nerve syst nervous system which is ladder like okay uh, like this ladder like uh, but I will uh, actually elaborate all these uh, characteristics in the later on videos you will get a clear idea of what uh, uh, these structures, these characteristics are depict and depicting. And uh, this is just an over a brief overview of this phylum. And then development. This is the most important part of every phyla, I will say. I would say. Okay, so this uh, development is either direct or indirect. Okay. Hyman was the scientist who actually classified this phylum into three classes. And these three classes are Cystoda, Turbellaria, and Trimadora. You can remember this. Okay, all these three classes are going to have organism which either complete their life cycle directly or indirectly. The ones which are having indirect development, indirect in the sense that they are going to have some larval form in their in some stages of their life cycle. Okay, because they are going to have some larval stages. They are going to be parasites in other organism okay and cause some sort of the disease so uh, the larval form the organism where indirect development occurs uh, they come under these two classes which is uh, which you can remember by the name sister okay sister as we call uh, for our sister brother sister kind of thing okay from sis you can remember sistora Okay, and from tur you can remember trematoda. These two are classes which are having indirect development. That means they are having larval stages in their life cycle. Okay, and the one which does not have any larval stages, it is not a par parasite. It it is turbellaria. Okay, you can remember this by disturb name by the name disturb. Okay. Why I uh, I actually use this disturb uh, word to remember this class name is because they are not disturbed by any larval form. Okay, their life cycle is very simple, so they are not disturbed by any larval uh, larval stages. Like they do not have to go uh, through molds and uh, you know transform uh, itself into like some different different sort of organisms. And uh, so. This is turbellaria, no larval form, okay. And the example are really very important of all these classes. Cystora, sister, okay, these two are larva con larval containing uh, classes. Sister, under cyst uh, cystora, you are having tenia. This is very important example. And the tenia has two larval forms, okay. Um, those are hexacanth which actually is the first larval form which enters into the pig uh, into the gut of the pig and from there it enters to the blood circulation of pig and 
it actually arises into the muscles of those pig muscle of that pig and uh, it absorbs some water from the outside and transform into the cysticerus larva <coughs> okay and this cysticerus larva is the infective larva stage in humans when human take those mes and those pork which are having cysticerus uh, inside them which is actually called measly pork and the, the, then the, uh, then human is going to get infected after taking that measly pork okay and this one makes an important mcq from the msc entrance point of view that which level stage in tinea is infective stage for humans and that would be cysticerus larva okay another example is echinococcus and they majorly are endoparasite that means they live inside our gut or alimentary canal so due to that uh, due to this reason they are not going to have any uh, digestive system of, of their own because they are already taking up our digested food and now trematoda the second class which is having larval stages okay and it is going to have all the flukes okay and i have uh, given two example majorly of the sheep liver fluke that is fasciola and blood flukes in human that is that is schistosoma okay and they are having some um, usually four to five larval stages in their life cycle talking of fasciola or sheep liver fluke they are having five larval stages and you can remember these larval stages like this mira spore red cess uh meta sir meta sir okay mira had a spore which is red in color and then sir and meta sir okay mira for mirachidium and then spore for sporocyst red for radia sir for circaria and meta sir for meta circaria okay talking of this sheep liver fluke which is the infective stage of larva of fasciola in sheep okay Metacircaria is the larval stage which is infective in sheep. And talking of human blood fluke that is schistosoma which larval stage is infective in human it is circaria. Okay this is important this makes up an important MCQ in from MSc entrance point of view. So I have not drawn the uh, like uh, general morphology or general structure of tinea worm but uh, uh, I will definitely uh, make that uh, make a video on that in the next video. So uh, what I have made here is uh, okay uh, let me just give you a brief overview of like uh, what a tinea worm looks like. It has a, a lobed head part and then a neck part and then a long strobula. Uh, you know long thread like strop th uh, not actually thread long tail like strobula okay and that strobula is actually metamerized into segments what is metamerism like the body is divided in such a way that each segment are going to have its own uh, like complete organ system each segment okay and i have and here in tinea each segment is called proglotid okay and all uh, and the body part which is going to have this proglotid it called is called strobula and initial proglotids initial 100 to 150 proglotids they are actually um different from the uh, rest of the later on uh, later uh, later uh, uh, proglotids because the initial proglotids show protoendrous condition okay these are hermaphrodite because they are showing metamerism each segment is going to have their the complete set of male as well as female reproductive system okay so the initial proglotids they show protoendrous condition protoendrous means male reproductive system mature earlier than the female okay and the later um uh, the end proglotids they are mature proglotid they are having both male and male and female reproductive uh, system matured okay reproductive organ matured so cross fertilization occur between the initial proglotid and gravid proglotid mature are also called gravid proglotid so here is a structure of one proglotid 
Okay, so this blue circular, um, like a circular structure which are scattered in this mesenchyme, these are called testes, and these tes uh, testes are going to be connected with vasa deferentia, vasa afferentia. Okay, vasa afferentia are branched structure. Okay, they are connecting with every testis, and then they are going to actually combine into a single long transverse tubular structure which is called vasa deferens this one is vasa deferens and vasa deferens is going to open into uh, in the exterior of this proglottate by the penis which is called serous in case of tenia okay and this external opening this is called genital atrium this is common for the serous the penis of the tenia as well as the vagina got it a single genital opening and then we are having female reproductive system it is having this ovary this bilobed ovary <coughs> this bilobed ovary is these bilobed uh, lobes are connected with isthmus okay this connection is called isthmus and from this isthmus there comes an oviduct and this oviducts connect to this vital line vital area vital line gland and also to the vagina okay and also to the uterus so in the periphery of this oviduct is present malix gland malix gland okay so when these uh, when these um, uh, sperm and egg fertilize then they make zygote and that zygote gets encapsulated here okay and uh, the capsule around the capsule this vital area will secrete some yolk mass which will provide some yellowish color to the capsule and uh, the um, malix gland they are going to secrete some uh, uh, you know lubricants which will uh, make the uh, passage of that capsule easier and these capsule or this fertilized egg we can say they are they have been stored in this uterus part so that's it for today's video uh, and uh, rest of the topic the actual larval life cycle uh, of both this tenia and schistosoma and fasciola i will cover in the later on videos and also the uh, actually elaborated description of all these uh, characters thank you